Your nose, mouth and stomach are all connected. If you've ever been sick and had vomit coming out your nose, you'll know this is true. But here's the proof. I'm going to take this nasogastric tube, stick it through Zahn's nose and down into his stomach. If Chris gets this wrong, he could kill me. He could drive it up into my brain or down into my lungs. So we can only do this because we're doctors. Now, nasogastric tube means nose-stomach tube in Latin. But the reason we don't call it a nose-stomach tube is because... I have no idea why that is. Anyway, let's go. First things first, we need to get that tube into Zahn's stomach. These tubes are used in hospitals to feed patients who are too ill to eat normally. And this experiment will show you how that's possible. So now the tube is, is about here in Zahn. Yeah, right, so I feel like you're right in the middle of my brain now. I'm not. So can you see it at the back of my throat? Open up? Yes. All right, it's, the tip is right at the back of your throat. After a bit more careful manoeuvring, the tube is now in Zahn's stomach. How are you feeling? It's like having a very bad cold, because obviously one nostril is literally completely blocked. And you look silly. Do I? I thought I looked quite cool. So, now the tube's in place, we're going to use it to prove your nose and stomach are connected. First, I'm going to drink some blue milk and next some yellow milk. Now, inside Zahn, the blue and yellow milk are in his stomach, where the end of the tube is. To prove it, let's suck the milk back out through his nose with a syringe. We've got yellow and blue stripy milk. <laughs> But hang on, what happens if we... Nice move, Zand. And the milk has turned green. So, we've shown your nose, throat and stomach are all connected. And this means if a patient's too ill to swallow, doctors can use a tube like this to feed them. But it's not nearly as nice as eating your food yourself, is it, Zand? Earlier, we saw Courtney in accident and emergency with something lodged in her ear. Let's see how the team get it out. Back in Sheffield, nine-year-old Courtney has a crayon stuck in her ear. Courtney was in her bedroom with her colouring pens and pencils. She liked the look of that yellow one. That might fit in my ear, she thought. Ouch! To remove it, first Dr Warren tried to hook it out like a fish but never caught a thing. So far, the crayon just won't budge. Dr Warren's decided to call in a colleague who's a dab hand at flushing things out with water. Who's that then, Zand? You'll see. Oh, we've got a towel. Yellow crayons, watch out! Sister Julie Morecambe's about. Sister Morecambe is an expert at this procedure. And don't worry, this isn't painful. It just feels weird. If you just put the fluid in under pressure, then what turns out the water flushes behind and pushes the foreign body closer to the uh, entrance to the ear canal and then there just comes out with a second go. There you go, out it comes. Pop. Hey, hey. All hey. done. She came, she saw, she flushed it out. Look at that. There's nothing else in behind and I'll leave yeah. it to it. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much, Julie. Courtney's happy she's got a yellow crayon back. Got it out now. She looks much more comfortable. Watch what you put in your ears now. Especially yellow crayons. Bye! Bye.